Um, thank you. I'm honored to be here. I want to start um, with what Ambassador Saleo um, presented to us, which was a notion of a world beset with disorder, and in contrast to that, to manage such disorder, there needs to be a contrary pole, which I posit is the great is centered around the great democracies of the world, starting with Europe and the United States, and extending to all the great democracies in the world. Now that sounds like a civics book cliche, but it's helpful to put um, issues of transatlantic relations and U.S. or Western Russia relations between Russia and the West in the largest possible context. The world is beset by forces of disorder, whether that is terrorism, um, economic chaos, environmental challenges through climate change. And the institutions to deal with such challenges exist um, beyond individual nation states and need to be rooted in the great institutions that the international community established starting in 1945. In that context, it was the hope and remains the hope of every American administration from 1989 that Russia would be a contributing and major part of the world center of great democracies, contributing to world order, prosperity, and peace. That was the basis of President Clinton's outreach and support for Russia under President Yeltsin. That was the basis for President Bush's um, efforts to reach out with President Putin, famously looking into his soul, but it was an expression of our, of our hopes. And that was the basis for President Obama's reset, also with President Putin and Russia. Well, as the Russian phrase goes, we hoped for the best, but it turned out as usual. Um, our hopes from 1991 for Russia were not realized. It may be that we Americans overestimated the potential for democratic transformation uh, on Russia's part. We tended in those years to think of Russia as on the path of post-communist democracies. The Baltic States, Poland, the Czech Republic. It may be that we underestimated the difficulties and the trauma of a loss of empire. In any event, the hopes of successive American administrations were not realized in full, but we have not abandoned the ultimate hope of a better relationship with Russia. Right now, of course, our relations, and not just between the United States and Russia, but between um, the transatlantic community as a whole on one hand and Russia on the other hand are dominated by Russia's aggression against Ukraine, to which our principal response has been sanctions, which is my current job, but it's not really my background. I was, I'm new to sanctions. I'm not new to Eastern issues. Our sanctions are a response to Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine, and by that I mean the appearance of the little green men in Crimea does count as an invasion, even though the tactics were hybrid. And an annexation of a neighbor's territory has not been seen in Europe since 1945. The fomenting of 
separatist, armed separatists, violence and war in the Donbass is also the responsibility principally of Russia. Many killed, hundreds of thousands displaced, economic ruin, killing that goes on to this day are principally Russia's responsibility and required a response and the West did respond through the largest program of economic sanctions we have ever implemented. Now sanctions are not an end in themselves. They are merely a tool to achieve certain ends and in this case sanctions seek to achieve the end of a negotiated solution and the good news is that solution has already been outlined and agreed to by all the parties. It's called the Minsk Accords and they roughly allow for a ceasefire, additional security measures, elections in the Donbass, decentralization reforms in Ukraine and a restoration of the eastern Ukrainian border. I've said before but I'll repeat now when Minsk is fulfilled and that eastern border is restored, the sanctions uh, will come off. That's been the US position and I believe it is the European position as well. Sanctions would remain for Crimea, but only the Crimea sanctions. We look forward to lifting those sanctions. More generally, and to fit the theme of this conference, The largest strategic issue is what sort of relationship Russia chooses to have with its neighbors and thus with the world. As the Soviets used to, used to say, there are objective bases for cooperation with Russia on a host of problems. Counterterrorism, hopefully in Syria, North Korea. There is, as, as the saying goes, an objective basis for all of that, to which I would add that Russia could be a splendid partner and even ally at some point in the future. Russia has the potential, both intellectual, military, and political, to be a wonderful partner in the world, but while Russia seeks to dominate its neighbors or dismember them, it will be hard to have the kind of relationship we seek. There needs to be, as Ambassador Saleo said, an understanding between the great powers, but an understanding which is based on spheres of domination is not sustainable in the 21st century and was not sustainable after all in 19, after 1945. History shows that. There will come a time for better relations between the West and Russia. I'm convinced of that. Just as I am convinced that Russia is not doomed to remain an unreformed economy, principally um, uh, prospering or not prospering on the extraction of raw materials. Those are our hopes for the future, but our present situation is otherwise. We have to deal with Russia as it is. To get to a better place, we are going to have to go through the present period of difficulties. The United States and Europe have acted with determination in support of a negotiated, negotiated settlement. Now, there's a great deal more to talk about, and no doubt we will, but I was asked to keep yeah. remarks short, sure. and so I will continue. Thank you.